what a happy day it is in Terrapin Nation. The University of Maryland pulled off an improbable victory, 14 to 13 in overtime, as Jared Bernhardt tied the game with 3.0 seconds left. And then in overtime, it was Louis Dubik getting his only goal of the game to win after Maryland had lost the faceoff. Maryland lost all the stats today. But let me tell you something, all right? In my experience of covering John Tillman, this is now his ninth quarterfinal win in 10 years. Play Virginia next week. This was a game when it just looked like Maryland could win. When you look at the faceoffs, uh, 21 out of 30 for Alex Woodall, and he was fantastic. But Wesley Janet came in, number 22, in the fourth period and kind of won his share to keep Maryland on board. But here's the bottom line. To beat Maryland, you're beating a team where you can never underestimate the heart of a champion. At the Jack Lish Law Group, uh, not only will you feel like a member of their family, uh, you'll also receive uh, unprecedented customer service. We love our clients, and you'll see that if you trust us at the Jacklet Small Group, the big dogs from the small firm, and we'll reward your trust. Call the big dogs today. Don't wait. Find us online at bigdogsmallfirm.com. And they played like it today. I myself never thought they were going to win the game. When they got down, uh, I think 12 to 10, and they were up 12 to 10, then they got down 13 to 12 when uh, Towson scored with a minute, about a minute 50 left, got the ball back. And Jaron Bernhardt, who had been quiet, he had one tremendous dive play goal uh, early in the third period. But this game turned around so much. Maryland at one point was down 7 to 3 and kept clawing, clawing back. As for the Terps, Logan Wisnowskis, three goals. Bubba Fairman, three goals. Jared Bernhardt, two. Anthony DeMaio, two. Kyle Long, one. Louis Dubik, one. And Matt Rahill, a long pole, had a great goal. Uh, Brendan Sunday for Towson proved he was everything we heard he was uh, with four goals. And Timmy Monahan came back to haunt the Terps. Timmy was a Terp, went to, transferred to Towson for his last two years and had a goal and three assists. Kyle Long, four assists for Maryland. Just, just a miraculous game for the University of Maryland. And now they move on. And Maryland had not played Towson since, I think, 2010, maybe 11. And the coach for Towson, uh, Sean Nadlin, was just really, I remember, you know, gave me a lot of hell when Tillman dropped him from the schedule. Maybe they'll get back now. This game was certainly a classic. Maybe John changes his mind, but believe me, I never second-guess him. He's the man. Uh, and Towson was really ready for this game. They came out. Uh, they were down 3-1, to one, but then they just took over the game, scored the next six goals. But it's so great to be a Maryland Terrapin lacrosse fan. And uh, nobody would have given Maryland much of a shot when they were down by seven to three, but they came back. They came back, won the game, very similar to Ohio State, where they tied it late. That was a Logan Wisnowski's goal, and then uh, a Jared Bernhardt goal in overtime. And Jared Bernhardt, he was shut down for most of the game, but when it mattered, he showed up as number one should for the University of Maryland and always does. Of course, he's got the number one tradition, and Bubba Fairman with three goals. And this was just after the two losses to Johns Hopkins. This was so improbable to come back like this. But Curtis Corley told me after the second Johns Hopkins game, he said, Bruce, if we make the tournament, he said, I promise you, we're going to do some damage. Well, now you have an opportunity to. Next week's game is on Sunday in Hempstead, New York. Lord knows how to get there. I have no idea. But uh, it was a miserable day. Raining and windy and 50 degrees felt like 35. But all that went by the wayside. And Maryland had the dog paw at the end.
just a great, great day for the University of Maryland. And we should add that the women won. The last time I looked, it was 17 to 7. Got off to a slow start against Stony Brook. But uh, their, their, their just tremendous play came through at the end. They wound up winning easily. Don't know who they played next. We'll certainly have that updated on the website. But uh, this is one I won't forget for a long, long time. Uh, it was great being in Baltimore. And do I think they should play again? You know, it's not my decision. But uh, to me, I don't see why not. Towson certainly a pretty high-ranked team right now. Uh, and they got the home field advantage, which was meant a lot. Uh, once again, we're brought to you. This post-game show is brought to you by Rick Chaplich and the Big Dog Law Firm. Arf. Arf, I could bark today because I'm in a good mood. And I uh, wasn't in a good mood during the game, but I, I almost had accepted it at 7-3 to three that this could be a problem. But never, ever, i say it again, the focal point of this game is never give up, all right, or never underestimate the heart of a champion. Maryland proved it today coming back to win this game. And I haven't got to watch it yet, hear what all the TV announcers did. But with 60 people or 30, 50 people in the press box, you know, maybe myself and the Diamondback kid and maybe one or two other guys were rooting for Maryland. But it was all Towson. But you know what? They didn't have it today. And it was, they played great. Nayland did a great job of preparing them. It's a dead even game when you look at it, except the stats all favored Towson. 21 out of 30 faceoffs. Ground balls, 33 to Maryland's 23. Shots, 47 to Maryland's 33. Uh, extra man opportunities, Maryland 2 for 3, Towson 0 for 1. Uh, Maryland did a good job on the clears. Towson was perfect. Uh, and how can I forget to talk about Danny Dolan? Danny Dolan was incredible. Our goalie with 15 saves kept us in this game. And without him, there's no way the Terps win. But that's the bottom line. It's over. The Terps move on. And uh, we'll be back next week for our post game and our pre game on Turk Talk Wednesday night of the Maryland Virginia game. Another game that hasn't been played in a long, long time. So, once again, we thank the big dog, Rick Jacklitz, and his law firm for sponsoring our post game show and uh, Viner Four Gates, and of course, Meyer Consulting Engineers, who's been with us for over 10 years. That's it for today. I went to inside quarters to do this because it was so windy and cold outside. Go Terps. It was a day we won't forget.